All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Minority Mavericks. This is Angel Lee, and your host. And this is a show where we tell the stories about all minority entrepreneurs, founders, and investors out there. And in today's show, we have Miri Buckland, and she is the co founder of Landing Space. Welcome to the show, Miri. Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Great, great to have you, Miri. Thank you for taking the time to uh, talk in the in our podcast today. This is going to be great for a lot of you know people out there to listen to. So uh, let's start with obviously the beginning, um, and let's start with your journey. And you know, if you want to give a little bit of introduction of where you come from, your background, and basically what have brought you here today. Yeah, awesome. Um, we can start right from the beginning. Um, so I grew up in London. I'm from the UK. Uh, I now live in New York. Um, and I would say my story has this thread of trying to figure out what creativity is or means. Um, I, growing up, was not necessarily the one who was labeled creative. So I have two sisters who are beautifully artistic in a traditional sense. And I was very much more the kind of analytical one, the one who was good at maths and science. Um, and I never thought about myself as a creative. And it was it was kind of an assumption that I carried with me from a very young age. Um, and then later in life, started to kind of question it um, of why don't I feel like a creative person or why am I not allowed to be a creative? Um, but I was always drawn to things that were a bit different and a bit off the beaten track. So, for example, after I graduated from my economics undergrad degree, I went to work at Sky TV, which is a big media and TV company in the UK. And mm -hmm. that was really exciting for me because it was a big consumer brand and it felt somewhat creative, even if I, in my role, was doing much more kind of analytical things. Um, so... I, I started to question this this identity of not being creative and um, it took me out to Silicon Valley where I started exploring startups. I went to business school out there and I met my co-founder Ellie who um, is beautifully creative in both the traditional and non-traditional sense in that she's artistic, um, studied studio art undergrad and we started really exploring this question of why do some people identify as creative and some people don't and how could we empower more people to feel creative in different parts of their lives and that was really the the very start of landing um, which today is a social app for creativity and community it's kind of like pinterest meets canva um, and it's mostly popular amongst kind of female identifying and non-binary identifying teenagers So that's where I am today, uh, working on landing, which is very different to what I ever expected I would be doing. Very cool, Mary. Thank you for that. Uh, that's it's great, and I like that you mentioned you know creativity as a topic because I I kind of believe that minority people have a little bit more of that than some others, uh, just because of you know those survival skills kicking in, type of thing, and yeah. and be able to go through loops that other people don't have to go through. Um, and we have to navigate those and be creative, right, on how we navigate these things. And, um, you know, of course, your, your topic is more about designs and, right, uh, things like that. Uh, but all, all in all, the idea of just creativity, right, it's a, it's a, it's yeah. a very good topic yeah. for minorities. Yeah. Let me ask you, um, in terms of as a minority entrepreneur yourself and coming from other country, um, and again, as a woman specifically, what challenges did you face through your journey? Yeah, well, I, firstly, I just love what you said about creativity and um, how it's particularly applicable to minorities. I think creativity in its essence is really just creating something new, it's combining things mm -hmm. and ideas in new and novel ways. Um, and sometimes restraint or um, certain challenges can actually breed a lot more creativity. So I, I really resonate with what you said. Um, Definitely. And I would say for me, yeah, there've definitely been a lot of challenges across the entrepreneurial journey. I think whether we like it or not, there are still real stereotypes about what kind of what a successful or specifically a venture backed entrepreneur looks like, sounds like, acts like. Thankfully, that's changing a little bit, but still only 2% of venture dollars are invested in female founders. And that is absolutely crazy to me. Um, yeah. And when you when you don't fit into that mold of what an entrepreneur or stereotypical kind of success success story looks like, it's really hard to see yourself in that role. And 
one of the challenges I had was kind of breaking down the stereotypes for myself and seeing myself as someone who could be a successful entrepreneur or actually, you know, take on that founder role and start my own company. Um, and in my case, I, I was lucky. I was at um, business school and I saw entrepreneurs of all different backgrounds, stories, personalities and minorities like tell their own stories of building companies. And seeing that diversity really helped me overcome my own um, like inhibiting beliefs, I guess, um, on whether entrepreneurship could be a path for me. Um, but even after doing that and starting to see myself in that role and exploring being a founder, I had to then convince other people of it, um, you know, in raising money and in hiring people. And, and when you're building something like landing, which is, you know, mood boarding and collaging for, for teenagers, um, it takes even more convincing um, because, you know, we joke that landing is a silly little collaging app, but we actually have a huge vision for changing how social media and social commerce work. Um, and that's a, a massive multi-billion dollar business, but it takes a lot of breaking the mold and stereotypes to convince people of that. Um, so, yeah, I would say that the the challenges for me have really been in like seeing myself as an entrepreneur and as a founder and then convincing people of our idea and of our um the scale of our idea in particular yeah definitely um uh, i can see you know based on the product that you have right i can see how uh there could have been some challenges on the, uh, on the way you know given that it's a very very specific niche right that you're that you're tackling there and it's very very cool i i, I love what you guys are doing there i i love the fact that there's also that focus on newer generations as well. Um, and I, I, I like that a lot. I like seeing companies uh, not just putting products out there for people in the 30s or the, the late 20s or whatever, but, you know, yeah. they're, they're teenagers, right, that need that direction as well. And I believe that there's a whole opportunity, right, in market to tackle, right, and target these these other newer generations that, you know, they, they need the same things that all the generations need. Uh, so really, really cool what you guys are doing there. Thank you. Yeah, it's and I think it's a really interesting opportunity to learn from a new generation. I think I learn so much from our users in our community every day, and it's so refreshing to be immersed as someone who's a millennial in the world of Gen Z. Um, and I think, you know, there are some parts of what we're doing that are very um, tried and true generation to generation. Like people have always collaged and wanted to feel creative and wanted to find community through that. But the ways in which um, that happens and that exists changes from generation to generation and, and the brands that resonate um, and the communities or the needs of the community change, I think. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And Miri, um, how, did you, how did you face these challenges specifically? So you know, as a woman or uh, again, someone coming from a different country and experiences mm -hmm. all these different challenges and, and just roadblocks in general, um, how did you specifically face them, right? Did you have, um, you know, did you do any kind of research? Uh, did you reach out to any kind of groups, right? How, how did that look for you? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it depends on which kind of challenge you're thinking about or talking about. I think um, in the challenge of fundraising, it's very different to the challenge of like, how are you competing against other apps in the space, right? Um, but I think in general, my stance on it has always been to kind of like lean into your own magic and lean into what makes you, you, even if that doesn't necessarily fit the mold. And I think we've done a really good job of that at landing. And, and one instance I can um, point to, for example, is, you know, every time you're fundraising or talking to people who might invest in, in your company, they often ask you the question of like, what would happen if Facebook built this or if, right. um, in our case, Pinterest built it? And, you know, like, how would you defend this? Like in the worst case scenario where someone with so much more resources, so many more resources um, started to build what you're building. And that happened to us in that Pinterest launched an app that is called Shuffles. It's a collaging app. It in many ways looks very similar to Landing. And at first it felt like a real like panic, you know, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. They put so much right. more behind this. Like we're only at the time, I think we were like six people. It's a really small team. Um, and it felt like a real kind of David versus Goliath moment. But 
right. it was an amazing forcing function because what actually happened was it helped us highlight the differences between us mm -hmm. and what they were doing it helped us really lean into the parts of the experience we were building that were our magic which was really the community that we had and it was this really unique culture and um, community of creators who were just resonating with our team and what we stood for and our brand um, and in a way what was one of the hardest challenges of you know Pinterest really coming into the space um, ended up helping us it helped us to get really clear on what we were un uniquely good at and uniquely positioned to do um, so that's one thing and, and I think the other it has been to really collaborate with peers. So this is maybe not what everyone in, in startup world does, but um, I found so much value from joining forces with other founders and other companies who are kind of in our cohort of startups. So we actually ended up building this movement called Collective Media, which is a group um, of startups who are all building social apps. And a lot of people might look at us and think that we're competitive. And in some ways we are, but we're all building very different um, platforms and products just with aligned values of what the future mm -hmm. of social media should look like. And um, we've come together as a group. There's now like 70 companies in that group uh, to share, you know, common knowledge and ideas and strategies and support each other because we think that the only way that we'll be able to build companies that can rival some of the massive companies in our space is by banding together and, and sharing um, and empowering each other. And that I think that's pretty unusual for yeah. startups who are technically mm -hmm. com competitors. But for me, that's always kind of been how I operate, which is like very collaboratively. So yeah, those two things I think in the face of challenges lean into what makes you unique and collaborate and ask for help. Very cool. Yeah. And this, this uh, kind of, for me, goes back to what we were talking about earlier of the, the creativity, right, of minority people and not just the creativity, but also the resiliency, right, which is why yeah. you guys went literally through. And that's a perfect example of, of those two things for you guys, right, that comes this big monster, right, that has all the resources in the world. And now what do you do, right? So you found a way with your team to to fight that monster in some sort of way, right? So that's, that's again, a clear example of what we just talked about and, and that resiliency and just that um, creativity of doing something else, right? To expect the same results, but we get out of the box a lot. And um, I love that, you know, you guys are doing the same too. Um, so just to dig a little bit into diversity and inclusion in general, Considering that the uh, the tech industry right is historically known for underrepresenting minorities, um, how do you see landing space contributing to to a more diverse and inclusive tech ecosystem? Yeah, it's a great question, and I think a really really important one. Um, it's a lot of what aligns the companies in the collective media movement um, in particular. And I think it's been part of landing from the very beginning. Um, so a few things I can speak about here. I think the first is that we are very purposeful in building a user acquisition funnel that is global. Um, we really ca care, sorry. <clears throat> we really care that um, landing has representation from all over the world. And we recognize that our team itself, which is only 11 people is very US centric. So. We've been really focused on building user acquisition pipelines through TikTok and Instagram and um, Pinterest where we can access and share landing with a really broad array of people. So we have 190 countries um, represented on landing today, which is one of my favorite things ever. Um, but cool. we also built a uh, volunteer ambassador program which huge shout out to Liz Friedland, our head of community who built this. But we have ambassadors, over 100 ambassadors from over 35 countries. Wow. And that is a real effort from us to try and best represent the global nature of our community through our team. We think of our ambassadors as part of our team. They are an extension of our team. They are representing landing. They are helping us build the community and the culture. And it's really, really important to us that they... Um, represent people from all over the world and um, all different yeah. minorities. Um, 
And I, I think, you know, you can build an ambassador program. Anyone can build an ambassador program, but right. you have to really listen to them. Um, and so that's, I think, been the real key, which is we listen to them. We spend a lot of time with them. We spend time talking to them live in Slack, in um, Discord, and now in our app. Um, and that has been a huge, huge advantage to us. Okay. Um, and then I think that that really flows through to our product. So the way that we build our product is that it is really community led in that we have all these feedback channels. We listen to what people want. And because we've acquired, you know, a really diverse array of people into the app, we have a really big group of ambassadors who are helping us with the feedback and we're really listening to the feedback. Um, it helps us build a product that is not just driven by our own ideas or biases but it's really like built grounds up by the community um so i think all, it kind of flows all the way through from who's joining landing to yeah. um, how we're operating within landing all the way to um how we build the product definitely and and you guys are like more community about community power inspiration how how is it that your your company landing space uh is fostering diversity and inclusion Uh, within those community spaces, right? And and why do you think this is crucial for uh, today's business landscape? Totally. Um, I'll start with why it's crucial. I think in the most fundamental way, landing is a community that is, is powered by a product. And without the community, landing doesn't exist. And there's no way that we can achieve our vision of empowering creativity at scale without building a inclusive community. So when you think about that phrase, empowering community, uh, creativity at scale, the scale part is simple, that like you're not actually going to be able to access the market that we want and the global nature of it without um, encouraging inclusivity and driving towards a diverse community. But more importantly, to empower creativity, our community has to feel safe. They have to feel included and safe in order to express themselves and to share something. And so, you know, as I said earlier, at its core, creativity is combining things in, in new ways. And mm -hmm. um, not only does our community need to feel safe and included to share that within landing, but diversity is also a powerful driver of new ideas and of creativity. So um, to build the place that is the most inspiring and creative place on the internet, um, it's crucial to landing that our community is, is diverse and is um, inclusive. So we've always thought about that as a prerequisite for what we're doing at landing, not a kind of add on or something nice to do right. later. Um, and that, that all probably sounds very abstract, but it comes down to very, very tactical day-to-day -day actions. So, for example, in Landing, we have these community spaces, which are like group chats where you can share the collages you made around different topics. Um, and you can also chat. And those are all kind of suggested by the community. So it's not us holding the pen on what people should be talking about. It is very right. much like requested by the community and it's constantly evolving to serve what they want to talk about um we've always tried in those to foster inclusion of people who don't speak english as their first language for example so we added a espanol space so that people could speak in spanish there um and Very then cool. i think the last thing i can talk about is really you know what we tell our ambassadors and what we tell everything everyone on landing is that no one on landing is is the same you are unique you are you and you bring very unique talents to our community and they that provides different value and different ways of engaging so one person might love creating boards another person might love commenting on other people's boards and sprinkling glitter which is our version of likes on their boards and all of those different types of people with different ways of engaging in the community really matter Um, yeah. And without that range of people doing different things, um, we're nowhere near kind of like healthy community. So we always try to model that as a team, communicate and give shout outs to people who are interacting in these ways and build the pathways in the product that encourage people to show up how they want to, depending on who they are and what interests them. That's amazing, Miriam. Um, I like that you said earlier 
about community. I feel that in the in the Web two space, right, uh, mm-hmm. that's something that we need to kind of learn from from the Web three space, right, where Web three is very based on community. And like you said, if you don't have your community, you don't have your product. Um, yeah. And I feel that that applies. I mean, it applies perfectly to your kind of product. But I feel it also applies to any other product as well out there, right? Um, because at the end of the day, it's it's all about that community. It's all about those people talking about a product, right, with each other and amongst each other, and then sharing those products with their family and friends and passing that along. And yeah. that's what, right? That's your community. And if you don't have that, then you can use marketing dollars, right, to put, yeah. uh, put your your product out there. But word of mouth. It's still nowadays, especially with social media, a much bigger, you know, opportunity than putting marketing dollars into into promoting something, right? Just we see yeah. it all the time when things go viral. All you need is just a one viral post, and things change. So I, I love that the landing space has that concept to the T, uh, where again, it, it's it's kind of scary to know to to just to think about the fact that if you don't have a community, then your product does not work. Um, how mm-hmm. do you deal with that specifically, it, or, or you know, even if it's that uh, a fear of yours? Yeah, I think it's always a fear, but we've been building our community from before we've had the product, almost. So you know, we we have always thought about um, pivoting the product and building the product in ways that best serve our community, rather than the other way around. Um, and the product has been through so many different iterations, but. The thread of the community has really stayed constant. So, um, yes, it's a it's a priority, um, but that's I think part of the magic of landing that um, I I really enjoy and our team really enjoys um, building. That's cool, Mary. And thanks for you know again being on the show. Um, and before we you know conclude here though, um, I want to ask ask you to give uh, a little bit of advice to your. Uh, audience here uh, so speak to them and but before you do that maybe just tell us a little bit about your future plans you know any future plans that you have or that you have with the landing space Um, and then yeah close out with uh, giving that piece of advice to to your listeners awesome um i can't believe our time's almost up it's gone so quickly um but yeah i think i think at the moment um we've just been through a massive growth spurt so uh we have always found our users organically but we've just had 200,000 users join us in the last couple of weeks so it's been a bit crazy Um, and it's really exciting because I think landing's really resonating um, and it's helping us build a really like buzzy and healthy community Um, so we're really focused on just keeping up with that growth scaling the actions and um, the parts of the product that we know that they love and just deeply listening to and learning from this cohort of new users because we always learn a lot when this many people come in. Um, so that's the, that's the main priority. We have a big international vision boarding month campaign kicking off on the 1st of December. Um, some exciting partnerships as part of that. And then obviously continuous product work um, on the kind of consumption experience in landing. So what happens if I want to come in and just discover and browse rather than create a board every time? And then I think you asked about so my advice. I think going back to some of the challenges that I've faced, my advice would be to figure out what, where you're holding yourself back and what beliefs you have about yourself or who you are that might be inhibiting your growth or um, your confidence in kind of taking a leap of faith or betting on yourself and try not to ever let that be the reason that you don't try. Very good. Very good, Miri. Thank you so much for that. Uh, for everyone that's listening out there, know that people like Miri were able to go through all those challenges that she just talked about and face them. Um, I believe that all challenges are out there to actually to do that, to face them. So don't be scared of going through loops and doing the different thing, thinking outside of the box, being creative. Uh, that's a topic definitely of this episode. So thanks, Miri, again for being on the show. Thank you. And um, quick, uh, before we actually close out here, how can they find Landing Space and how they can uh, connect with you guys? Yes, yeah, so you can find us on socials, which is landing.space. Um, and you can find me at Mary Buckland um, on Twitter, Instagram um, as well. And Landing is also on TikTok. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Mary. And to everyone listening out there, this is Angel Leon, your host. 
at Minority Mavericks is this is a show where you can listen to all the stories of all minority entrepreneurs, founders, and investors out there. See you next time.